read yet? No. Now, live. now we're live and we're streaming. Um, so I'll introduce the panel. We don't actually have any guests yet. So Hi, perhaps everyone. I should pause for a second. Um, is anyone else showing anyone? I don't see anyone on the panel. Um, I see a I see a picture on the bottom right, a third like a so somebody has joined. It might be. Uh, uh, I yes. believe that's um, Abiodun. Abiodun. Exactly. Avinda. Hi, how are you? Welcome. Um, Thank you. We're just starting. Technically, we're live at the moment, but there's no guests. But um, in a second, I'll just start the introductions and, um, and we'll go forward. Assuming we have guests, because from past panels, I find they tend to come in and out. I, I have a suspicion, I did have a suspicion, that there wouldn't be a lot of interest in the topic um, because, as probably many of you will observe, it's, it's an issue that probably can be fairly easily got around, the concern about the ecological cost of um, cryptocurrency. But um, I'll, I'll wait for you to talk on that. So I'll go ahead and just start making the introductions as um, we're joined today with four panelists. The um, topic is on cryptocurrencies and their ecological cost. I suspect we won't be entirely restrained to that. Um, and I would suggest to the panelists, you don't need to stay strictly on that. But of course, any suggestions to alleviate the ecological cost of cryptocurrency, and of course, most of it comes from the mining side of it, would be um, a welcome part of the discussion. Um, the people we have with us today are Govinda Aluwalia from Digital Twin Labs. Um, I'll just make these introductions very brief, and then when each of you speak, if you can go into a little more depth with your own introduction. Um, we also have Matesh Kotecha from um, President of Structured Credit International Corp. And Sam Seeley, um, Lead Digital Assets with the Digital Economist. And have I already mentioned Abedam Ayurinda um, from Nigeria with, um, and the company is called Darbar Technologies Limited, I believe. Um, so that's introducing each panelist. Um, let's start with, um, um, actually, let's start with um, um, Govinda, I think, because I think um, you started one of the first Bitcoin Project, so it will be um, interesting to get your perspective on this issue. And as I say, if you can confine your remarks to, about, remarks to about eight minutes, I think we should be fine on time. That will leave a little bit of time at the end for questions and answer. And we do have some people joining us now on the audience as well. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you for inviting the panel and uh, and doing the doing the job that you are doing, which is not the easiest one. <laughs> not is it? Thanks to <laughs> thanks to Harassis and to Frank for um, you know putting the narrative and putting the discussion and opening up the debate um, in in this uh, in this forum and this community. I have been associated with Harassis for uh, multiple years, of course, in person at the events, and now uh, you know gladly with a wider circle uh, online. Just a quick clarification to. A little bit of the intro that you alluded to. I wasn't. I wasn't the first uh, uh, to start a project on Bitcoin. We actually didn't even know who that was. Um, but I think what you were really Satoshi, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think what you were really alluding to uh, from my background is some of the work that I've done um, during my previous uh, tenure at IBM, where I was the CTO for IBM North America uh, for its uh, cloud IoT and blockchain. Uh, business, which in those three realms also is a way that they converge. Uh, but more relevantly, uh, just in terms of introduction, um, me and a few others uh, were privileged uh, enough to implement the first proof, implemented proof, proof, meaning actually in code using Ethereum version 0 0.5, I might add, of the use of blockchain in business and enterprise settings for the first time on the planet. That incidentally was around circa 2014, took two years to step through the IBM bureaucracy internally before it became an IBM blockchain business, uh, which I, which I uh, was part of the co-founding team and also co-founded the parallel hyperledger open source, um, open source movement. Uh, just fast forward in terms of the introduction, and then I'll, I'll move to some opening remarks. 
Um, I, I left IBM and I'm currently situated in my role as the founder of Digital Twin Labs and as the co-founder of uh, Claire Trust, which is a, um, a, um, a interactive risk management product company. Um, also addresses cybersecurity as part of that overall risk umbrella. Um, my work uh, in the last um, uh, five, six years in more the enterprise, uh, you know, on, uh, entrepreneurial side of, uh, you know, startups uh, and consulting has been spearheaded by blockchain, spearheaded by frontier technologies, uh, pulling together, you know, platforms and solutions. Uh, for example, uh, some of the work that I've done has been uh, the marketplace for um, uh, mortgages in U.S. with Freddie Mac, which carries 40% of the um, single home loan um, uh, sector. Uh, I wonder if you can still hear me clearly. I'm getting a little bit of network errors. We, we can hear you well. And, yes. Uh, all right. All right. And um, we have, uh, well, I think Sean has raised her hand. So after... After you talk, we'll um, let Sham ask a question and then we'll continue around the panel. Thank you. Sorry, so just to, just to continue the thought um, and other uh, other instances of work. I think we have a brief network problem. Yeah, he has gone off. Uh, <clears throat> okay, perhaps while we wait for... Um, Govinda, to come back. Um, Sham, I think you were wanting to ask a question. Um, feel free to go ahead if you want. You can grab the mic. I'll give you the mic. Um, let's see if this works. I think he, had, he can just grab it. Okay, yeah. Go ahead, Sham, and grab the mic if you want. If not, we'll continue um, with another panelist, and we'll come back. Um, no, no question from Sham. Okay, we'll carry on. Um, let's go to um, Mahesh, and um, perhaps you can talk a little bit about the risk aspect. And if Govinda comes back, we'll give him a few couple of minutes to finish off his comments. Thank you very much, John. Um, thank you uh, to Horatius and uh, Frank uh, for putting me on this panel. Uh, my background is... Uh, while I studied technology uh, as an undergraduate, I, I'm a financier. And uh, uh, with much of my experience in risk, um, in, in, in regulatory matters at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, uh, at uh, uh, Standard & Poor's, and then later in financing business in, in, uh, uh, in uh, um, investment banking. Sorry about that noise. Uh, uh, I just had to shut that off. Um, Technology so, is saving us from all sides. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, the reason I'm looking at crypto is uh, I'm uh, uh, I'm on a uh, on a group uh, uh, think tank uh, on on crypto. I'm very sorry, uh, Govinda. Please go ahead. Not, I'll try to take this call. Uh, Gurvinda, okay, um, Govinda, do you want to finish off your your remarks? And now you've. You're back on the network, and then um, um, well, then we can come back to Mayhesh when he's taken that call. Absolutely. Sorry about that interruption. <laughs> no um, problem. We're, we're, we're freewheeling this. <laughs> all right. So you can still hear me now? Yes, we can. Uh, it's good. All right. So just finishing up the introduction, giving some examples of some of the projects that, um, that I worked on. I mentioned uh, uh, the mortgage um, exchange for Freddie Mac, which is a $1.7 trillion entity, 40% uh, of U.S. mortgages flow through that uh, entity. Um, other is, uh, you know, the use of blockchain for containers, uh, tracking and provenance uh, of containers. Uh, another one is for global trade and provenance of diamonds and, and multiple others that I won't get into you. Um, but more, more importantly, also uh, the build out of a interactive risk management platform for having you know neutral transparency and measurements uh, to risk risk and governance uh, you know for small medium large businesses uh, of a kind that has never been done uh, and only happens in certain silos. Uh, real quick on sort of opening remarks to the to the topic, uh, John. 
Um, John, just a quick check. You can still hear me? Yes, very good. All right. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, there are two parts that I feel are to this debate. One part is that uh, there, is, there is a general backlash against crypto, which is well recognized. And that is also, and one of the fallouts from that is the whole energy kind of discussion around a Bitcoin, but more broadly speaking, proof of work. Uh, based uh, based networks. The second part where this debate is coming from is is a comparison that is being made between proof of work and proof of stake consensus protocols. So I, I'm just going to I'm just going to uh, ignite the discussion from my end, and then I'm going to give it to to you or to the question in the in the chat. <clears throat> but here's the main thing that I want to provoke. Right. Uh, I think that I'm going to ignore the first part, which is where the backlash around crypto is going is coming from. But I think to the second part, um, the whole discussion, the whole debate and the narrative around energy is at best, um, is at worst, I should say, is at worst irrelevant and at best it's misframed, right? So I just want to drop that um, ignition point because there's more to elaborate from the advocacy and partly the technical as well as the business comparisons that I want to try to draw out over here. But let me not belabor on that point. I just want to set it up for you. Let me give it back to you, John, to either invite the question from the gallery or otherwise from other other panelists over here. Okay, would be interested to come back to to that discussion, particularly about the um, proof of work and proof of stake. And also remind me to ask you about um, We've been working on redactable blockchains where, you know, the whole thing about the blockchain is you can't redact it. But, um, of course, now people have come up with ways it can be redacted. There is a, there is a patent on editable blockchains, incidentally. Yes, I know. Um, well, maybe there's several. I know of one coming out of um, the Research Foundation of the City University of New York. Is that the one you're thinking of? Or? No. Oh, okay. And I guess there's a couple of patents. We'll have to talk separately. Um, and, um, but, but let's, I'm um, come, let's come back to Mahesh. Um, you, you, uh, just hey, John, um, sorry, mark. sorry for the logistics. Uh, am I the only one that's not able to see your video? Um, no, I can't even see it myself at the moment, but that's okay. Yeah. I'll let you You're go. not missing much. <laughs> um, but, um, we can see you and we can hear you. So, um, if you'd like to. Um, just you know, briefly refresh on your introduction and then pick up where your remarks were. Um, Mahesh is muted and yeah, the um, is a little fuzzy. I, I, Mahesh, can you check your mooning? I'll check if... Yeah, I can't. I'm not sure if I can change it from here. Oh, yes. Mahesh, I, yes I'm, I'm, I'm back. I'm back. Good, yeah, good, I'm, good, good. The Thanks. fuzziness, I'm not sure I can do anything about... Uh, uh, it is simply the camera. Uh, uh, let me see. Yeah, that that's changed better. It. much better now, yeah. actually. So it just changed the focus. So, yes, thank you very much, uh, John. I'm very uh, honored to be with a pioneer like Govinder and, uh, and and the others that are around the table, um, around the screen. Um, uh, my background is a pioneer in structured finance and in capital markets. Uh, I come to uh, this issue uh, from a think tank perspective, from looking at risk, uh, one of the uh, 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 future for finance, future of finance working group at the Bretton Woods Committee, which is looking at crypto, has put, uh, put out a paper, and I'm looking at risk issues on that. So as I see it, uh, there are, of course, as uh, Gunda mentioned, concerns about, about the use of energy, and he has given you a perspective on why there may be two sides to that uh, view. Um, there are other, uh, the, the amount of energy that is being used um, is substantial. Um, some say equivalent of what Egypt or Malaysia use. So it's about uh, 100 million people in, in Egypt. Um, and some countries, about 15 countries have restricted, um, uh, put some restrictions on, on crypto, partly as a result of, uh, of concerns about uh, uh, about uh, energy use, although perhaps not the only reasons. Uh, there are, of course, concern, risks related to price volatility, which you don't need to belabor anymore because people have seen that in the last couple of weeks. Um, and, of course, longer term, uh, going back, 
um, uh, but there are uh, there are also uh, issues of uh, 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 different uh, uh, you know products with different risks among them, uh, especially the algorithmic uh, stable coins. I'd be interested to hear what people think about that. Uh, mm -hmm. Technology risks include something that I hope Gravinda can address, which is uh the 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 block the 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 bottleneck that comes from the scalability of a blockchain that has a single list of successive order dependent transactions that uh slow down processing so perhaps you have a solution to that or the industry is coming with a solution to that that that's not a risk in terms of a major risk but a technological issue that has to be resolved and that perhaps it will be and then of course there's the the big big uh big bear uh, or big elephant in the room the the issue of traceability of transactions, um, uh, which are uh, which uh, we can be anonymous to some extent, traceable, but but there could be untraceable cryptocurrencies, and indeed for even the traceability, there's the issue where they can trace to the actual owner of the account or only to the to the address used, and there can be multiple addresses used in the same transaction to make the payments from, so that camouflages the sources of. Uh, of, of, of the, uh, the 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 identity of the owners, um, there is a lot of interest in in the press, and uh, the President Biden has uh, announced uh, the executive order for regulation. So uh, there is interest in that, and of course uh, there are broader issues as to what is crypto and whether it should be regulated as near money or as something that is uh, a pr promoter of a decentralized global. Uh, uh, currency or or whether it's a DeFi or so there are multiple generations or uh, incarnations of crypto um, and uh, perhaps uh, we can talk a little bit about about uh, how energy issues affect those different uh, different elements one one or two other last points um, uh, whether I mean it it, it the regulatory uh, imperative imperative is is relatively uh, uh, early stage because crypto is not huge at this stage compared to sort of systemic issues um, and the value has declined but it has multiple interactions with the with the large players in the markets with uh, with uh, potential systemic uh, ramifications so there are in interest in looking at regulatory issues but the important thing is that exchanges are in are, are coming up and exchanges are promoting um, transactional activity and potentially could promote um, transparency. Forty percent of transaction volume is supposedly on exchanges, um, so perhaps uh, there can be a discussion on that issue as well. Let me just stop there. Uh, I, I, I think that uh, my just uh, my theme is that this thing is growing. It has its benefits um, uh, as the decentralized uh, ledger provides. Uh, I think uh, Gurinder mentioned uh, applications in trade, in in. Uh, in uh, transactions processing, and there is certainly you can talk more about that. Uh, yet there are risks, and and one needs to think about uh, how to regulate the risks so that there is some degree of uniformity across jurisdictions, nationally, uh, globally, so that uh, we don't get a rush to the bottom uh, to the most lax jurisdiction. Let me just stop there. Okay, thank you very much, Mahesh, for um, both covering the <coughs> regulatory concerns around the energy consumption and also the broader ones um, and in fact some of the financial risk ones. Um, perhaps now we can turn to Sam and um, talk a little bit about blockchain and its impact on some of the equity concerns. And I know um, Sam has been actively involved with, with government and, and we can get a further perspective on government's reaction. Yes. Um, first of all, just so uh, I, I echo, just as a, it's an honor to be on this panel uh, around uh, all these great minds um, and, and big thanks to uh, Harashis for this uh, um, honorable um, invitation. Um, so I'm Sam Sealing and I'm the lead digital assets for the Digital Economist, which is uh, basically an international organization uh, partnering with public and private sector uh, focused on uh, Web3 sustainability uh, and inclusion. Our core principles center around the 60 vision, which includes uh, among them digitization, the carbonization and decentralization. Um, I, I think, you know, there were some uh, a, a lot of things to unwrap 
um, with uh, Maish and, and, his, and his commentary. And, and I think, um, I guess I'll just, for my introduction, would just point out um, in, in talking to, uh, you know, let's say, for instance, in conversation with government officials um, and, and several different leaders is, uh, I think, a challenge for us um, in this industry to rise above a lot of the loud noise out there. Uh, loud noise, especially around looking at blockchain or crypto through the lens of Bitcoin, um, you know, whereas, you know, Bitcoin and, and certain different cryptos that are focused on being currencies, um, they definitely, you know, have a lot of the, the noise and the excitement. You know, I'm sure you heard of Dogecoin and all these other things that are out there. Mm-hmm. However, there is a huge, huge growing industry of vital use cases that um, are centered around how to use these blockchain protocols um, as a platform for innovation. Um, And um, some of the concerns for energy use have already been answered and solved. Um, There are are several different, you know, active blockchains with um, great partnerships. You have um, uh, Hedera as an example that's, you know, working with likes from IBM to Boeing, uh, the Stellar Development Foundation, um, and their stellar platform that's working, uh, for instance, with from MoneyGram to Franklin Templeton, which are using their their app for commercial use, um, and, and others, which um, studies have shown are already using um, uh, less uh, energy than uh, a Visa transaction. Um, and so I think that you know I think that uh, what we can do, and, and and I guess part of what uh, is, is is on mine and my colleagues is to ensure that we we share the broader story. Um, and discuss um, uh, the, the the broader goal and, and answer a lot of these questions, uh, so that way uh, that story gets presented out a lot more, and we can kind of evolve past um, some of the um, un- unfortunate, I would guess, misconceptions and and bad perceptions, I should say, um, of the crypto and blockchain blockchain world. But I- I'll pause for now, and, and we can kind of I guess tackle different things as as they come up. Okay, thanks very much, Sam. And we will be coming back on, on, on some of those themes you raised. Um, and um, it would be good now if we could hear a little bit from Abby O'Don. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yeah, give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so um, you describe yourself as a blockchain entrepreneur. So um, if you could give us a perspective from someone build, use, using the blockchain to build businesses, and um, touch upon whether you know, you're finding uh, the the um, the mining aspect an issue in in terms of the ecological cost. All right, um, it's Friday evening here. Good evening, everyone. Good, Good evening. morning, wherever you are. <laughs> okay, um, thank you for the organizer, uh, Frank, and everyone to be on this panel. Um, I appreciate it, and I didn't take it for granted. Okay. Um, Abiodun is my name, Abiodun Ayomide, and I manage a startup, Daba um, Technology Limited, uh, which we focus on digital identity verification. Okay. Um, prior to that, I've um, managed a couple of startups um, in Africa, and I've consulted for a couple of um, other startups too in the web three space in uh, both in Europe and US and um, presently aside that I consult with them um, Gitcoin, um, an open source platform uh, in web three space too as well and I contribute to the ecosystem. So um, quickly, I just want to um, you know focus like on the talking points and um, because we have limited time. Um, as regards the cryptocurrency and um, looking at the is the every conditional demand um, in the ecosystem. So I would say, you know, like cryptocurrency main um, main environmental impact comes from the um, the energy intensive activities which are being used for each transaction and especially for mining um, new crypto coin you know like bit uh, bitcoin so the energy required um i would say differs between cryptocurrency okay um in the case of bitcoin or the other cryptocurrencies or which we call tokens okay and uh, some of which require very little energy you know while others like the most popular one like i said bitcoin are pretty much an energy intensive and um 
from my, you know, over the years, you know, which I've been following up on Bitcoin and uh, for the latest, you know, for me, I would say it is uh, estimated that mining uses about 91 terawatt hour of electricity each year, which is about, um, you know, 0.5% of the world electricity consumption, more than the electricity consumed by all of Finland annually, and seven times more than what Google consume each year. To take this into perspective, I will see Bitcoin's annual carbon footprint is comparable to the release of about uh, 97.2 megatons of carbon dioxide, roughly the annual emission of some countries. Okay, so um, if we take it into perspective, and uh, now bring it back to, um, you know, looking at the world, you know, becoming more um, conscious of sustainability. Should these miners be taxed, you know, or like um, um, not to look into that direction? Um, I would say um, we, we have to look at both sides. For example, you know, like it has been established that... Um, Crypto mining is, consider, is considered a taxable event. Yes. You know, in, in where it's been uh, become a legal, uh, legal tender. However, virtual cryptocurrency from Bitcoin to Ethereum and the rest, which are collectively value, you know, about a two trillion, you know, before the bear market, <laughs> over investors, a way to shield um, income from taxation, which we all know is not a secret. But the... Um, on sustainable trajectory of such cryptocurrency disproportionately impact poor and vulnerable communities. You know, um, I follow up on some conversation that um, I was in a conference here when Elon Musk and some other um, leaders, you know, in, in this space were talking about this. And um, um, apart from that, I, because I contribute to such um, economy as well, so we, we have to take that into uh, perspective, you know, looking at to to see if um, um, the impact on the poor, the vulnerable communities, you know, where these cryptocurrency miners and other actors take advantage of the economic instability, uh, where we have weak regulations and access cheap energy and other resources. Um, for example, like um, uh, one of my colleagues said, you know, if you if you look in U.S., there has been an ongoing debate about about whether crypto miners should be subject to IRS reporting rules that require crypto brokers to report their clients' crypto transaction to the IRS. For example, I work in the web free space too as well, where I've been taxed. You know, and if I'm in Africa, I've not been taxed. If I'm in upper, out of the Africa, maybe in US or other Europe country, if I'm doing transactions that's crypto related, sometimes I've been subjected to tax. So. Like in US, it's been looking into that either we should, you know, it should be taxed or not. Okay. And um, um, in the end, it has been determined that the reporting rule applies only to crypto brokers. You know, um, if you if have been following up on that and was never meant to capture the work done by the crypto miners, because the reason is that um, crypto miners are actually not in position, especially to identify whether a transaction is scale. And do not have access to the personal information, you know, about that. And um, so I, I think I will stop now just to give um, <coughs> time. So, uh, okay, I, I appreciate um, the, those comments, Abiyadan, and it's useful for us to, to hear some of that. Um, we have a couple of questions. Um, perhaps we can start with um, Junaid, he's known to a couple of the panelists. And um, it would be interesting to hear if Uda has a position on this as well. Um, can you grab the microphone, Junaid? Let's see, I can manage the mic. I think you have to grab it. You need to bring him on stage. What's what, say? You need to bring him on stage. Bring him on page? On stage, on the stage, on the stage. No, he's disappeared. I don't know if we're having network problems or what. Um, and William, did you have any questions or? Okay, the questions don't seem to be. Uh, yeah, I did spot. Uh, oh, here's one. 
Okay, there we Hi, go. William. Go ahead. I think you've got, it says that William wants the mic, so it looks like you have to oh, grab okay. to the mic. Let me go to man. I just I just clicked on it, so I don't know if maybe that means oh, okay. he got yeah, it. There we go. It looks like we all have that privilege. Okay. Great. Hey, William. Yes. Thanks. No, I just wanted to throw in some of the data there, and thanks, Mahesh, for, for, for seeing that. Um, and, in fact, I'll be speaking on uh, climate impacts of uh, ad tech, uh, which, of course, is uh, uh, expanding exponentially as well at the Cannes Lions Festival on the summer solstice, the 21st of, of June. Um, and I think one of the big policy questions is, again, the, uh, the, the crypto uh, currency um, and, and uh, mining activities, uh, if they are using up a disproportionate amount of our renewable energy portfolio, you know, is is that how we want things to go? You know, motivated by you know, low low prices, uh, but that they also have you know that climate uh, advantage, um, and so that that's just a question to kind of to to, to throw out uh, to folks there. Thanks. Okay, thank you, William. Um, who who would like to um, answer that first? Uh, well, well, maybe, maybe I can I can just say a word or two on that. You know, the issue of whether uh, energy use uh, for crypto should be taxed or not, uh, or or disincentive or not. I mean, that's it's jurisdiction by jurisdiction, um, and some jurisdictions have actually limited uh, that already. Uh, so. Um, as I mentioned in my opening comments, 15 countries have some sort of restrictions, some more restrictive than others, and others may follow. But but to single out crypto use of energy uh, while leaving other energy uses alone um, is is not really a level playing field. If, if there is a reason to regulate uh, energy use, it, it should be broader based. Right. Um, and so singling out crypto is is uh is actually preventing or could 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 be doing the wrong thing and, and as somebody mentioned uh, the use of crypto energy varies according to what crypto you're talking about and and what specific use you're talking about so it's not really one one uh one 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 sort of one sort of one factor for all and, and to continue on your point, Mahesh, um, it, it, am, would I be right in thinking that with a lot of applications now moving to permission blockchains, a lot of these energy concerns effectively go away? Can um, any of the panel care to yeah, I think Gurvinder, Gurvinder put, put the uh, controversial point in his first, first sort of comment, so I think perhaps he should respond to that. <laughs> Right, I've got to defend myself as well. Right? <laughs> John, I missed a sound. Find me controversial. Yeah, John, I, I, I'll come to that. John, I missed a soundbite um, that you just said. What did you say? Um, um, I, I said with, um, you know, we're concerned about the energy issues with established cryptocurrencies, but many of the new applications um, are basically on permission blockchains. And as I understand it, much of the energy concerns um, go away in these circumstances. Um, well, yes and no. So that, that does um, give me an opportunity, and thank you to drill deeper into what I provoked previously, uh, and also addresses a little bit of what Mahesh and William just touched. Um, and I know Sam well, and I know the work that, uh, that we've been doing together in, in, in some of our, uh, uh, our, our forums. Um, so the thing is that um, if we are going to have an energy conversation around blockchain or specifically around Bitcoin or even somewhere in between, meaning for proof of work networks, then the apple to apple comparisons was, would be to have the similar energy discussions around the data center footprints of Google, of Facebook and pick your favorite Pick your favorite internet property uh, out there. Because at the end of the day, any of these blockchain networks run on data centers similar to what Google and other 
uh, you know, other internet properties are running on or Alibaba, you know, yeah. pick whatever your favorite is for your part of the world. So my point is um, the industry is still demanding and society is still demanding, which is why I started that there is a backlash, right? Nobody has a backlash against against the search engines of Google, <laughs> right? So let me let me ground this with, with, with some facts, right, and data. Every time you do a search on Google, it releases, um, I've, I've heard various numbers, but a good working number for this, for the for purpose of this discussion, every time you do a search on Google, it releases seven grams of carbon dioxide. So the next time anybody does a search on Google, think about that for a moment. <laughs> Let me put that into further perspective so everyone can relate to it. If you do two searches on Google, that's about the same amount of carbon dioxide released as it as it takes to boil a kettle of water. And I just made a, a two cups of tea for my mother and myself here in California. <laughs> so I did you're you're, you're blown through there. your budget for the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've blown my budget, you know, even before I started my, my real work day over here. And if you do a thousand Google searches, that's about the same amount of carbon dioxide that is released when you drive, if you drive, you know, about half a mile of your car, of your gasoline car. Right. So if we are going to have an energy discussion, then we should have an energy discussion that is, that is, that is competitive. I'm not saying fair. That is yeah. even in terms of apples to apples. Where is the social backlash? Where is the climate backlash? And where is the data on the energy consumption from other data centers and other servers? The next point I will leave you with is, is it's really not the servers per se, whether they're mining servers or they are um, Google servers or Facebook servers. And I'm, I'm in a very neutral role ever since I left IBM. And actually, incidentally, I do have the privilege from having done work at IBM in designing and deploying and operating large-scale data centers. I've done that most of my life and know the deep nuances in optimizing data, science, in data centers. I'm a computer scientist by background, and most of my work, about 30% of my work is spent on you know, stra strategic kind of thinking, um, and about 70%, 80% of my work these days is spent on actually building platforms. <clears throat> so, so it's not so much because there's massive automation that has gone into deploying servers. Um, and back when I was younger, it used to take about one, one person to manage 20 to 50 machines. Guess what that number is today? One person can manage tens of thousands of machines if at all that human being is needed. Yeah. My point is that there are two forces here in play which go counter to the discussion around energy consumption of IT equipment per se, whether it's mining or other uh, use cases. And that is those two forces are Moore's law, which is still well and alive and kicking. Right. And the other forces, massive automation has gone into these data centers that yeah. basically it happens without any human intervention. Yeah. Okay. So my wrap up point over there is that it's really not the equipment per se. It is the what's called in technology terms, the workload or to simplify, it's the applications that run on it. And yeah. those applications are being demanded by society, which is which brings us full circle back to the point that I started with. How many of us are ready to stop using Facebook? Well, I am because I never created an account on yeah. Facebook ever. Uh, but how many of us are really um, willing to give up our GPS the next time we need directions or willing to stop searching on Google yeah. or any other of your favorite engines? Yeah. So we've got to have a grounded discussion if we are going to have a, a fair comparison, at least an even comparison. Back right. to you, Mahesh or John. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a very fair point, um, Govinda. And we'll see if Sam wants to add to that in a moment. You, you could in some ways... Um, you're saying that the market is driving the consumption, and I think that's that, that's very true. In some ways, also the market is managing the the impact of the consumption because you know the the de data centers tend to be migrating north where it's cooler. They tend to be cropping up by hydroelectric power stations where they can basically tap in with very little carbon footprint. 
And it may be that uh, your, all this energy should be, this mental energy should be applied to finally solving fusion energy, which has just been always been 10 years away for the last 50 years, um, because that will basically reduce the carbon imprints of all these applications. So we don't have to be arguing over which application is using the most energy. So I'm a big believer in market forces. And, um, and perhaps that brings us back to Sam, because um, it's in some extent the space that you're occupying. You, you, you're in and also um, let's go to Nigeria and get um, uh, Abiodun's input as well so if you want to go first Sam and then we'll switch back to Abiodun and then we'll be getting fairly close to time for wrapping up yeah I'll be I'll be brief I mean I, I think that uh, what uh, Gavender just brought up is um, is so on point I was actually writing down some of these statistics um, to, <laughs> add, to add into my arsenal myself you know I mean mm-hmm. I, I you know, it's it, it does go back to how we how we started off is that there's so much noise around um, the energy consumption argument um, when, you know, as you know, as I pointed out earlier, there are other solutions. There are other ways of, of for, for different tools. Um, yeah. And then, you know, the, the broader social discussion that he that he just uh, brilliantly, uh, you know, brought to light is the fact that, you know, is this really a fair discussion? And so um, it goes into the broader discussion as to. Um, you know, what truly is, is, is the bottom line and, and issue um, that we're trying to solve and, uh, you know, uh, harnessing our resources to do that. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll pause there. I, I think that he summed it up pretty well. OK, um, have, you, have you done any uh, comments from Nigeria? Yeah, um, as, for, as for Nigeria, like um, we are in between, you know, um either regulating or not so um we are we are trying to move close to that to see how we can regulate that but as as far as mining is concerned in africa in nigeria i think is um is a minor you know um compared to like um europe maybe sweden or other the rest of um um americas you know so but um um looking into that perspective, we can't say that we are not going to contribute into that, okay? And um, like uh, what uh, William said now, you know, saying that, um, you know, like uh, where is the addictive um, renewable energy capacity in crypto, which is very essential. I think I think that part is like summarize everything for me, you know, like we could look into a perspective, you know, how... Um, Every other ecosystem, you know, either from Google, from Amazon, um, and AWS, and the rest, you know, that they, they are contributing to the problems when it comes to um, um, the energy use, you know, con- including cryptos too as well, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, or whichever. But um, the question we need to ask ourselves, because I believe in the ecosystem, you know, this is where ecosystem I function very well for the past four years now. So I can't deny the fact that. Um, um that we we need to look into that um renewable energy when it comes to crypto for example you know i was following up on the news of um um is it a Salvador? I, I can't remember the country um I, i'm trying to remember the right pronunciation now. you know which um a kind of um given a city where they'll be able to mine if you start mining um um, Bitcoin and the rest, you know, stuff like that. Yes, those things are very good, you know, using leveraging on the volcano and the rest. But we have to consider the um, the environmental impact too as well. You know, in as much as that we look at the whole thing, looking at the um, the future of it, you know, of blockchain, of um, crypto, of what the environmental impact, you know, is very essential for me. I think the take home for me here is that um, from what um, William said is that where is the addictive re- renewable energy capacity in crypto? We have to think about this and we have to see how we can fine tune this uh, conversation and make sure that we can put it out there and see how we can re-educate people in the space, in the ecosystem and be able to contribute to the conversation too as well. Okay, thank you. You know, one thing that I just wanted to add in, you know, when yep. you when we look at, um, you know, both of these 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 comments here side to side, 
you know, when we think about the fact that we're on a verge of an opportunity to change the world, right? We're, we have an opportunity to change what we do, how we do, how things interact. Um, we have a choice, right? And so if, if you look at, let's say, the example with, you know, Facebook or, or Google, you know, you can kind of waver and say, what do you get out of that, right? There's a lot of information um, that we get. There's a lot of use case, general, you know, use cases that are coming out of, you know, something as Google searches, right? I mean, the information that we're able to get, there, there's, we could say high value. And so now we have a choice, let's say with Bitcoin and mining. The, the question is, is that, yes, if it's comparable to Google searches, you have to ask, we have to ask ourselves, does, is the, is the, the impact, the benefit, does that still equal, you know, the impact that it's giving or is, is the, is the benefits equal to the, to, to the energy that's being used and the carbon footprint that, that that's being used. So I, I think that that's an important question that we have to, we have to ask ourselves um, as we choose the, the right platforms that we're going to concentrate our, our development moving forward. Yeah. And, and of course, again, some of that comes back down to the market, you know, is there demand for those applications and, um, in some ways, it's self-regulating. The, the thing we haven't had a chance to touch upon much at all is um, cybersecurity. Perhaps that can be with, with the blockchain. Perhaps that can be the topic of another channel. And I've got a particular interest in FHE, but that's another massive energy hog um, with the existing algorithms. I, there is a new one coming out, something else we can talk about in the future that has much, much less processing associated with it. So many, many issues for the topic. Any quick round uh, through the whole panel for closing remarks? Quick closing remark from my end, John. Uh, first of course, thank you so much uh, for running the session. It's not the easiest topic, but you've navigated <laughs> us so well and kept us honest, hopefully. Uh, and, you know, thanks so much to my colleagues and uh, folks that I know in the gallery uh, as well. Uh, here's here's the last remark I will make, and that actually touches on the cybersecurity topic. Um, you know, I made the comparison and I made the argument around other data centers, right? I think that's well understood. Um, the last argument I will I will advocate over here is is actually around security. So, it, it, U.S. pays about um, it costs about hundred billion to two hundred billion dollars to run the traditional payment infrastructure in the US, okay? Uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, that's a huge, that's a huge, huge number, right? The, the, point, the point is that we have to look at the energy consumption for Bitcoin and similar uh, blockchain networks from the perspective, what does it take to secure transactions? What does it take to secure digital assets and digital transactions? So the phenomenon of decentralization and therefore the phenomenon of consensus protocols, and therefore the, the, the phenomenon of energy consumption, those three are related and you can, draw, you can draw straight lines through those dots. Those phenomena are directly related to what society and businesses are willing to pay, not for speculatory investment and all that crap, but what they're willing to pay to secure transactions and to secure the governance of a platform. Back to you, John. Okay. Um, basically, let me just get in before we get cut off. Thank you all for taking the time to join the panel, um, bringing your own unique contributions. It is an important topic. They we touched upon many other important topics too. And let me just go back to the um, the, the other three of you. Um, just a quick, um, quick final word, and then we'll we'll wrap up the panel. Um, Mahesh first. Thank you. Uh, 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 excellent panel. Uh, I think the equation has been well set out by Gurvinder. Yes, there is a capacity to have innovation with a DLT technology, the decentralized ledger technology, and save costs and have greater speed, the payments processing with DeFi and, and smart contracts and the like, and that innovation should be encouraged. I'm just reading a book called... Uh, uh, crypto daddy which is brilliant uh, and uh, um, you know it should, but but there are costs and and the, the risks that attend to crypto should be addressed through regulatory frameworks that I think should be done in a fashion that promote uh, even-headed uh, and even 
and fair regulation to protect uh, uh, against uh, the, the abuses that can occur from massive uh, uh, speculation and from potential risks on anonymous transactions that might be illicit. Okay. Thank you. And uh, if we had more time, I'd, that's an interesting point I'd like to come back to, you, but um, another panel. Uh, be a done. Um, uh, just closing comment, quick one. Yeah, like um, um, Mahesh has said, um, I don't think I, I don't need to add to that. I would just want to appreciate everyone for your time and be able to make it to this um, panel session. And uh, irrespective of whether the topic look, um, um, you know, like appealing or not, you know, but still showing up and be able to uh, be part of the conversation. Thank you so much. Okay, and Sam? Yes, um, there's so much great, great information has been shared today. So I just want to continue with my, my thanks and appreciation as well. Um, I'll just end um, once again on the fact that, you know, when we look at why was Bitcoin created, you look at the white paper, it was for a peer to peer uh, payment network. Um, Ethereum was introduced, another proof of work. Um, and uh, a lot of that was focused, you know, as a for their EVM, as a, as a, a platform for, for building smart contracts, smart contracts. And, uh, and, and, and applications. And so when we look at why these things were created, we have to ask ourselves, are there better solutions? And I believe the answer is yes. And so if there are better solutions that, you know, solve for these, you know, proof of work, um, or even, I mean, it's even, even involved past proof of stake, which we didn't really get to go into. Um, and we're able to still, you know, reach those goals that Bitcoin and Ethereum set out to do in the beginning. Um, it, 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 it's, it's our responsibility to make sure that these applications, these use cases are discussed and we have all these great minds that can help to move those needles forward. So that way we can, um, you know, attain the, the dream okay. that we're all trying to reach. And, and quick comment on that. Of course, the original, um, Genesis block of the blockchain, um, was an article about how the bank of England was, printing too much money and leading to inflationary trends. And it, it may be timely just to remind ourselves um, of how cryptocurrency came into being in the first place. Um, but once again, thank you all. And thank you, um, Frank, for um, his, his incredible organization. It must be like herding cats, but he seems to manage it every time. Um, and thank you, Horasis. And, and I guess we should say, Thank you for the modestly named Run the World platform that enables it all. <laughs> <laughs> thank okay, thank you, everyone. Thank Let's you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Sure, yeah. Thank you. Stop streaming. <laughs>